Um, where we are right now, uh, basically if we look down here, this is Manchester. What I wanted to show you was that. I don't know if you can see this, but that is, that's Liverpool basically. And this is called the Manchester Ship Canal. And this canal here runs all the way from Liverpool docks into Manchester. And during the Industrial Revolution, this was stupidly busy ferrying goods between Manchester and Liverpool. All the factories over here, all the exports over there. St Helens is actually on this canal, it's like over here somewhere, roughly speaking. But um, yeah, I just thought I'd show you that while we're flying overhead. Okay, we're picking it up. We are just started our descent now into London. Uh, let me just show you where we are on Flight Sim Commander. One second. There it is. So this behind us here is Birmingham and Coventry. And this is us flying down here towards London, which is here. Uh, I don't know if you know or not, but London Gatwick is just south of London. And London... Sorry, the London Gatwick is here just south of London. Stansted is just northeast of London. And Heathrow, which is where we're going, is west of London. They're the three big London airports. There is one inside called London City, but it doesn't tend to take uh, big aircraft. So what I've done... Oh, it's just a bit of potted history, by the way. <laughs> what I've done is I've set my altitude down to 7,000. Uh, if I just flip back to the map a second. Come on. There we go. Zoom out. Pop this out would be easy, wouldn't it? There we go. But why don't we just leave that over there for one second while I zoom out in. BNN is, was Bovingdon. We need to be at 7k by the time we get to Bovingdon. Now if you look at this green arc here, because I put the speed brake on, you can see we're going to hit 7k in time for Bovingdon. Uh, when we make that right on turn, um, we get over to here um, we need to be about 6k at this bit and then we make a left turn descend down to three and a half we had that three and a half thousand ceiling and then we made a left turn into uh, runway 09 left 09 is on that kind of course there so we need to go right and left and left again if you remember what I showed you on the original chart so I'm going to set the our course for the runway which is 0091 it's a bit early to be doing this yet, but you know, nothing else to do right now. And altitude 16k. Let's have a look outside while we're, we're waiting. The weather is still extremely misty, as you can see. But because the sun's come up a lot more, it's probably about 7 a.m. Oh no, probably not actually. It's probably about 6 a.m. I think in the game. But it is summer, so it's you know 6 a.m. in the UK, and summer is very very bright indeed. You can see down there, Birmingham was way back there somewhere, and London is down here. I reckon we're thinking about it, where are we? Luton Airport, which is out northwest of London. It's got to be around here somewhere, possibly here-ish. What do you think about this? These textures, aren't they incredible? Beautiful scenery, beautiful clouds. Rex 4 textures and scenery packs, and you can make this game look spectacular. It's amazing to think what they're still squeezing out of this, considering when it was made. I can only hope... Let's pop that down again. I can only hope that one day Microsoft picks up the baton. Sadly, they handed it over to Lockheed, but you know, they're making prepared. I don't know if you know about that, but prepared is the what Lockheed carried on with on FSX, if you like. But it's quite expensive. I think it's about $200, which, you know, it's a little bit out of most people's league. And then you've got X-Plane, which is a completely different thing, but it is 64-bit. What I'd love to see Microsoft do is just take hold of this game again, make it 64-bit, make it DirectX 11, and it would just be amazing! It would be amazing to get hold of all of my RAM, my 16 gig of RAM and my GTX 780 graphics card and just make things look so immersive. Anyway, I'm just looking at the altitude here and thinking to myself, we're just on the cusp of hitting BNN 7K. So I think that's going to be okay. Right, we're getting down towards 10K now, so... 
and get everybody back in the seat, although I didn't really turn the seatbelt sign off. Uh, we're going to go with the logo now. Strobes on, we'll put the wing light on. I think we'll take retractable and fixed. A little bit of extra drag. Don't need to worry about anything else there, I don't think. Nope, that's all good. Can I zoom in now? Yeah, so now we can see what's going on. BNN is here. Got any complaints from the flight computer? Not yet. I expect we will get some. 7k here. I'll probably take flaps 1 as we make this bend after D179 Echo. We've got to get a descent down there. So between this curve here and the next curve though, we've got to go from 6,000 down to 3,500. And then we need to get down to 2,500 for our final turn into 09L. Lovely sight though, isn't it? Somebody's asking the stream what these two little holes are at the back. So you know when I started and I had the APU on? That's like the auxiliary power unit or the ancillary power unit. That, they are the exhaust ports for the APU, essentially. So that's where it is, it's back in here. And it's basically a small engine, a small turbine engine that can generate power. Get enough power to kickstart the main engines. So you need the battery to start this and then this to start those. So that's essentially what you're doing. Oh, this is lovely scenery. wonder where that is. It looks like a real village, doesn't it? It's fantastic. No errors. I'm just keeping my eye on the flight management computer. A bit like Train Simulator. I, I kind of look around the scenery and then all hell breaks loose in my, uh, my vehicle. I'm trying to avoid that. Okay, well at the moment we're not going to make 7k, so I'm surprised it's not complaining wildly. We've not made 7k at Bovingdon, that's for sure. Uh, we need to be 6k at that point, I'm going to drop that down to 6. You can see the arc now at 6k. I need it to come down a bit more aggressively. Approach VREF not selected. I thought we had selected that. I'll tell you what I didn't do. I didn't select the ILS, which was 110.30 is the 09 left runway. Just make sure it definitely got that 6k and not 7k limit. Alright, I think we're doing okay. It's getting kind of cloudy outside. Look at that! Giant balls of cloud! It's incredible. Let me show you where we are now. On FS Commander. So we're here. That was Bovingdon. We just passed. This is the right turn. And then we need to be at 3.5 here. 3, 2.5 and, and then we come in on the approach. That's the River Thames going through. In case you didn't know. Let's get the audio back. No destination path after LAM. Right, okay. It's not happy. Why is there no destination path after LAM? It's at altitude. See, our altitude is 7k and I told it I wanted 6. Do it the hard way then. Get me down to six. Silver play. Right, so I'm going to bring that back now to about 190. I'm trying to hit that curve, you see. That green curve is where I want to be. I think 190 is a little bit too slow. 200 is more like it. I'm going to take flaps one at this point. I'm a little bit concerned about the approach. Uh, sorry, the it doesn't know where to go after LAM34. We're just about to pass LAM34. I'm surprised it doesn't know where we're going, to be honest. 
seems to on the plan. The plan seems to be okay. Let's put the brake on two at this point. Let's say flaps five. All right, we're coming down to six k, which is where we wanted to be. We want to be exactly here at this point. Let's go back to VNAV. Probably take the speed brake off at this point. Use the MCP altitude, fine. Uh, we want to be two and a half coming into that runway. Drag required again. Actually, you know what? I think we've got to go three. It seems to have forgotten the ceilings. Oh no, it hasn't. Three and a half. It hasn't forgotten the ceilings. In that case. Let's go three and a half. What's going on outside, I wonder? Oh, just some fantastic scenery, nothing much. Right, we're heading southerly at the moment. And Heathrow is over there. So what's going on? Just so you know, get your bearings a little bit. Okay, at this point, I'm going to bring down the landing gear and go flaps 15. Get all the drag we need then. Speed break off. Okay, we're now at five nine knots. What's the computer saying? The computer's good. We should get a localizer lock. Yep, we've got localizer LNAV now. So when we make this turn of on the approach, <coughs> all the lights set. Let's get all the landing lights on. Let's get the runway lights on. We are set to land, I believe. Thing was zero nine two. Two. Okay, looking good. Now we should bank left now. Once we start banking left. Oh, it's not banking left, is it? It's not banking left. This is what it was complaining about, I think. What's on the approach instead? where we want to be. Okay, we have now got ILS lock, which is good. So we're going to straighten up. I'm going to go flaps 30. And we are on final. Don't have a visual yet, because it is so incredibly that up as well so you can see that. Always handy to have that thing. See his diamonds here. So speed on left, 152, altitude. These diamonds are what we're trying to get. Yep, 2500 sounds good to me. There it is, just coming into view. So we should have the left runway here and the right runway should be over there somewhere. I think we can just about see the papi lights in the mist. It's so misty. Of course, as the sun comes up, the weather starts to clear up. But at the moment... Yeah, just about make it out. So what I'll do is I'll go manual as we get a little bit nearer. Hundred. Looking 
good. This is what they see when they come in over Heathrow. I hadn't realised how many bodies of water there are around here. Incredible. Okay. Disarming the autopilot. And auto throttle. And I'm going to try and land this myself. Just going to try and hold it steady. Try and keep those diamonds exactly where I want them. Pitch down a little bit. Excuse me if I don't talk quite so much at this point, but this thing takes a surprising amount of concentration. Heathrow is a massive airport. It's huge, I mean, you'll see when we get in the scenery pack for this, it's pretty good. Let's be to the left just slightly. So I need to descend, so I'm going to throttle back a little bit, pull the nose up. Almost straightened it. Let's pull that nose up a bit now. Notice the papi lights are showing that I'm all good and yet the ILS is showing that I'm way off course. 100. 50. Okay, 50. throttle back. 20. 10. Come on, come on, touch, touch, touch. There we go. Nose down, it's harder, brake. It's harder off. Frame rate lag. <laughs> That's the scenery loaded in. Like I say, this place is fiercely complex scenery. I'll show you in a second. Let's bring the flaps up now. See just how good this scenery is. Ah, oh, something taking off. I can hear it. Okay. And parking brake. We are in Heathrow. Yay! Flaps are just coming in completely now. Awesome, let's get our taxi light on. And we'll turn the strobe unsteady, we don't need that flashing, and we'll call in GSX. Request to follow me. Handling by British Midlands, there you go. And there it is over there, just coming over. So you can just do a, a in FSX you can have it show you a taxi route to a particular gate. When you've got GSX you can get a follow me so it'll basically drive you to the gate which is kind of cool, nice little touch, I like it. However, you do have to be quick because this guy doesn't wait for you. So, let's park and brake off. There he goes, he kind of turns around and stops in front of you just to troll and then drives off. There he goes. Come on dude, keep going. No, no don't stop like that, just just keep going, that's it. Just keep going, follow me. <laughs> that's what I'm doing, just keep moving.
Are we going left? Don't tell me it's here. That would be hilarious. I thought it was that one there. That would be fantastically funny. Now, he doesn't have the scenery pack I've got, so he may have a tendency to do crazy things. My frame rate is tanking now. You can see the scenery around here. The problem is because FSX is 32B, it's limited to a maximum of 4 gig of RAM. And when you think all these textures are getting loaded in, it causes this thing to swap out. We can uh, turn the flight directors off at this point. We don't need those. We'll uh, get the passengers off power this thing down for the next flight. I take it we're going right here, dude. He's probably going the long way. Let's enjoy the scenery, shall we? Ooh, not many aircraft here. You see it's not frame lagging anymore now, it's got all the scenery in. It's doing quite well. Oh, is that where we're going? There he is, I see him. This is where we're going. I assume. Yeah, they're all waiting. Fantastic. That guy there, that's where we need to be. Get over onto the yellow line. Like so. Yeah, you keep waving, dude. I'll just keep moving forward. He'll start crossing his arms in a second. Here he goes. Here he goes. Come on, it's a little bit more. Please get engines. With pleasure, sir. Let's get some ground power first. Actually, what I should really have done. Should really have started the APU um, on the way over. Rather than have to wait for it to... Um yes, I'll cut engines in a minute, sir. Thank you very much. Let's get some lights turned off while we're waiting. Tax light, logo lights, stable. We'll leave the collision light on at the moment while the engine's lights are on. You can see the APU firing up. What I should have done while I was taxing should have started that APU because it takes a few seconds to get going. You see the exhaust temperature go up, come back down to 4-0. If I cut the engines now, we'll have we'll lose all power. So yeah, that's what checklists are for, aren't they? To remind you to do those kinds of things. Because we can't tell GSX to disembark us until we cut the engines, basically. It's just not safe. put the APU on. So now on APU power, which means I can do what he wants me to do. Kill those engines. Cool, now we can do deboarding. Let's get that done. Let's get the passengers off here. Bring up the FMC. FS actions. Remember to operate the jetway. Oh, it wants the jetway. Hang on. Doors. Open air stair. I think it wants the air stair at the front. There we go. We'll open left aft. Wants cargo as well. Open left entry forward. I will once we've got the... There we go. Don't want to let the passengers off until they've got somewhere to walk out of. Passengers are now deboarding. Baggage unloading in progress. Awesome. It's a pity you don't see passengers walking off. That'd be awesome. Oh, you know what I should have done? Brought the jetway over. That's what it wanted me to do. Operate the jetway instead of the air stair. Never mind. 
Baggage unloading in progress. Passengers deboarded. Okay, that was Edinburgh to London Heathrow. I hope you enjoyed that flight. Why don't you leave me some comments and let me know what other flights you'd like me to do, any other things you'd like to see. That's it for this one. Uh, long flight, good flight, successful, had some FMC problems, but um, on the whole it was good. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Take care guys, and happy flying.